Egypt, a land of ancient wonders and modern marvels, where the sands of time whisper tales of pharaohs and pyramids. But beyond the iconic landmarks lies a tapestry of culture, history, and surprising facts waiting to be uncovered. From the mystical Nile River, nurturing life in the midst of desert sands, to the bustling streets of Cairo, where the past seamlessly merges with the present, Egypt captivates with its enigmatic charm. Join us as we delve into the secrets of this captivating land, unveiling the hidden gems and surprising facts that make Egypt truly unique. Get ready to embark on a journey of discovery as we unravel the mysteries of life in Egypt. Number one, both men and women wore makeup. Did you know that in ancient Egypt, both men and women adorned themselves with makeup? It's true, but it wasn't just about looking good. There was a deeper significance behind the application of cosmetics. The most common type of makeup worn by Egyptians was eye paint, typically in shades of green or black, but it wasn't just for aesthetics. Egyptians believed that applying makeup around the eyes could ward off the harsh sun rays and even had magical healing properties. Imagine waking up in ancient Egypt and reaching for your eye paint, not just to enhance your appearance, but also to protect yourself from the sun's glare. It's a fascinating insight into their daily rituals and beliefs. But makeup wasn't limited to just the eyes. Both men and women also used red paint and henna to add color to their lips, hands, and fingernails. And let's not forget about their exquisite perfumes. Perfumes were an essential part of ancient Egyptian culture, with fragrances like Susinum and Ciprinum reigning supreme. Susinum, made from lily, myrrh, and cinnamon, was a favorite among the elite, while Ciprinum, with its blend of henna, cardamom, cinnamon, myrrh, and southernwood, captivated the senses of all who encountered it. Number two. Cats were considered to be sacred animals. Imagine walking through the streets of ancient Egypt. You'd likely encounter these graceful creatures lounging in the sun or prowling around the temples. Cats weren't just pets. They were revered as symbols of protection and good fortune. Every household sought the companionship of a cat, believing it would bring blessings and safeguard the home. But why were cats so highly regarded? Well, it all stems from their association with the goddess Bastet, the protector of home, fertility, and childbirth. Bastet herself was often depicted with the head of a lioness or a domestic cat, symbolizing both ferocity and nurturing qualities. The ancient Egyptians weren't just fond of their feline companions, they took their protection very seriously. Laws were put in place to punish those who mistreated, harmed, or even killed a cat. Can you imagine the severity of penalties for such actions? It wasn't just a slap on the wrist, it was a serious offense in the eyes of the law. And when it came to their passing, cats were honored in death much like royalty. Unlike other animals, they were often mummified and laid to rest in special tombs dedicated to Bastet herself. These tombs weren't just ordinary, they were adorned with lavish decorations and offerings, showcasing the deep reverence the Egyptians held for their feline companions. Even today, evidence of this ancient reverence for cats can be found across the globe. Museums and collections proudly display intricate cat figurines crafted from wood, stone, and bronze, serving as a timeless reminder of the bond between humans and these majestic creatures. Number three, they used molded bread as medicine. Imagine walking through the bustling streets of ancient Egypt and stumbling upon a healer applying moldy bread? It might sound bizarre to us, but for the Egyptians, it was a stroke of genius. You see, those ancient minds were way ahead of their time when it came to medical innovation. So how did this peculiar practice work? Well, it turns out that moldy bread, though not the most appetizing, possessed incredible healing properties. Deep within those fuzzy patches lay fungi that produced powerful chemicals capable of combating bacteria. These chemicals acted as natural antibiotics, killing harmful bacteria and preventing infection. Imagine a world without antibiotics. The Egyptians didn't have pharmaceutical labs, but they had something equally effective, nature's own remedy hidden within their daily bread. But before you rush to raid your pantry for moldy bread, hold your horses. While ancient Egyptians may have mastered this unconventional healing technique, today we have much safer and more reliable methods to treat wounds and infections. Our advancements in medicine have given us antibiotics, sterile bandages, and advanced wound care techniques. 
So, while we can marvel at the ingenuity of our ancestors, it's essential to recognize the progress we've made in healthcare. But there's something undeniably intriguing about the ancient Egyptians' approach to healing. It's a testament to their deep understanding of the natural world and their resourcefulness in utilizing what was available to them. Number four, bread and beer was used as a currency. Did you know that in ancient Egypt, bread and beer were more than just food and drink? They were actually used as a form of currency. Yes, you heard that right. Bread and beer, not coins or paper money, but these staple items were the backbone of their economy. You see, life in ancient Egypt revolved around the mighty Nile River. Its annual floods brought fertile soil, crucial for agriculture. And what did they grow? Wheat for bread and barley for beer? These weren't just dietary staples, they were the lifeblood of the Egyptian economy. Imagine this. Over 100,000 workers toiling away under the scorching sun, building those iconic pyramids that still stand today. How were they compensated for their labor? Not with gold or silver, but with loaves of bread and jugs of beer. Bread and beer were used in everyday transactions, just like money is today. From buying goods at the market to paying soldiers for their service, these commodities were the currency of choice. But it doesn't end with commerce. Bread and beer played a vital role in religious and spiritual practices as well. They were offered to the gods in temples and tombs, ensuring favor and blessings from the divine. However, this reliance on the Nile's fertility came with its own set of challenges. When the river flooded too much or too little, crops would fail, leading to shortages of bread and beer. And believe it or not, this wasn't just bad luck. It was seen as a sign of divine displeasure. When the gods were unhappy, it wasn't just the crops that suffered. Egyptian society itself could be thrown into turmoil. So you see, bread and beer weren't just sustenance. They were symbols of prosperity and harmony. Number five, the Great Pyramids was not built by slaves. Contrary to popular belief, the pyramids were not built by slaves. In fact, they were constructed by skilled laborers who were paid for their hard work. These workers were not forced into servitude. Instead, they were honored to contribute to such a monumental project, one that would stand the test of time and leave a lasting legacy for generations to come. Picture this, thousands of workers coming together, each bringing their expertise and dedication to the table. From quarrying the massive stones to meticulously placing them in just the right position, every step of the construction process was carefully planned and executed with precision. And here's another interesting tidbit. Those who lost their lives during the construction were not simply discarded or forgotten. No, they were given proper burials near the sacred pyramids, a testament to the respect and honor accorded to them by their fellow workers and the ancient Egyptian society as a whole. So, why is it important to dispel this myth about slave labor? Well, for one, it helps us to appreciate the incredible skill and ingenuity of the ancient Egyptians. It also serves as a reminder that history is often more complex than we initially perceive it to be. As we stand in awe of these magnificent structures, let's remember the laborers who toiled tirelessly to bring them to life. Their legacy lives on in the stones that continue to tower over the desert landscape, a testament to the power of human ingenuity and collaboration. Number six, a diving paradise. Did you know that Egypt's east coast is hugged by the stunning Red Sea for a whopping 750 miles? That's right. But what makes this stretch of coastline truly remarkable is not just its breathtaking beauty, but the fact that it's been designated as a nature reserve. Yes, you heard me right. A sanctuary for millions of species, including the majestic coral reefs that call this underwater world home. Now picture this, crystal clear waters teeming with life, vibrant coral reefs stretching as far as the eye can see, and an underwater world waiting to be discovered. It's no wonder that the Red Sea is hailed as one of the best scuba diving destinations on our planet. But hey, even if you're not a certified diver, don't fret. With its shallow reefs and abundance of marine life, the Red Sea offers an equally mesmerizing experience for snorkeling enthusiasts. So, whether you're suiting up for a deep dive or simply dipping your toes into the shallow waters, there's something here for everyone. Number seven, an untimely death. Tutankhamun, often referred to as the Boy King, ascended to the throne at a tender age and ruled during one of the most fascinating periods in Egyptian history. 
but what befell this young monarch remains shrouded in mystery. For centuries, the prevailing belief was that Tutankhamun met his end through foul play, perhaps even assassination. However, recent advancements in technology have brought forth startling revelations. A CT scan conducted on Tutankhamun's remains unveiled a surprising truth, injuries consistent with those inflicted by none other than a hippopotamus. These colossal creatures, often depicted in ancient Egyptian art, played a significant role not just in the ecosystem, but also in the lives of the pharaohs themselves. Historians tell us that hippopotami were prime targets for sport hunters in ancient Egypt, and the young pharaoh was no exception. Records indicate that Tutankhamun himself partook in this exhilarating pastime. Picture it, the mighty pharaoh, armed with bow and arrow, facing off against one of nature's most formidable beasts. It's a scene straight out of an epic adventure. But what happened during one of these hunting expeditions that led to the demise of Egypt's beloved ruler? Was it a stroke of misfortune or something more sinister? As with many enigmas of ancient Egypt, we may never have a definitive answer. Yet, the discovery of Tutankhamun's injuries sheds new light on the complexities of life in this ancient civilization. Number 8. High Literacy Rate When you think of Egypt, you might picture the ancient pyramids or the majestic River Nile. But did you know that Egypt boasts a commendable literacy rate compared to many other nations? It's true. But here's the catch. While the overall literacy rate is high, there's a notable gap between men and women. Let's break it down. Currently, men in Egypt have a literacy rate of around 83%, which is impressive, right? However, when we shift our focus to women, we find that the numbers aren't as promising. Women, unfortunately, lag behind with a literacy rate of approximately 59.4%. Now, before we delve deeper, let's take a moment to reflect on what these numbers truly mean. While we celebrate the progress Egypt has made in education, it's crucial to acknowledge the disparities that still exist, particularly concerning gender equality and literacy. But here's the good news. Egypt is actively working towards bridging this gap. Initiatives are underway to enhance educational opportunities for all, regardless of gender. From literacy programs to educational reforms, Egypt is on a mission to ensure that every individual has access to quality education. Number nine. Egyptian women had equal rights with men. Let's journey back to the banks of the Nile and explore how women in ancient Egypt were ahead of their time. Unlike many other ancient civilizations, where women were often relegated to subordinate roles, Egyptian women of equivalent social status were treated as equals in the eyes of the law. Imagine strolling through the bustling streets of ancient Memphis or Thebes. In this vibrant society, women could own, earn, buy, sell, and inherit property just like their male counterparts. That's right, they were empowered economic agents with the ability to make their own financial decisions. But it doesn't stop there. Egyptian women could also navigate the intricacies of the legal system. They had the right to bring cases before the law courts, and yes, they could even be punished if they broke the law. Talk about equality under the law. Now picture a typical Egyptian household. If tragedy struck and a woman found herself widowed or divorced, she didn't lose her autonomy. In fact, she retained the right to raise her own children, free from the oversight of male guardians. This was a remarkable level of independence for women in ancient times. And here's another surprising tidbit. Women weren't just confined to domestic roles. In the absence of their husbands, they could step up and manage business affairs, acting as capable deputies. This speaks volumes about the respect and trust placed in women within Egyptian society. Number 10. Few Egyptian men married their sisters. Imagine being born into a world where marrying your sibling wasn't just a possibility, but sometimes a royal tradition. It might sound shocking to us today, but for some of Egypt's kings, marrying their sisters or half-sisters wasn't just about keeping it all in the family. It was a strategic move. You see, these incestuous marriages served multiple purposes. Firstly, they ensured that the queen was trained in her royal duties from birth, guaranteeing loyalty not just to her husband, but to the dynasty as a whole. This loyalty was crucial in the cutthroat world of ancient politics. Plus, marrying within the family reduced the number of potential claimants to the throne, keeping power within a select circle. But hold on, don't jump to conclusions just yet. While brother-sister marriages were indeed practiced among royalty, they were never compulsory. 
Some of Egypt's most prominent queens, like Nefertiti, hailed from non-royal backgrounds, proving that bloodline wasn't always the deciding factor in a queen's ascent to power. Now, outside the royal family, incestuous marriages were a rarity until the later stages of Egypt's dynastic era. Confusion often arises from the ancient Egyptian terminology, where words like sister could refer not only to a biological sibling, but also to a wife or lover. This linguistic quirk has led to debates and misunderstandings over the prevalence of incest in ancient Egypt. So, what can we learn from this? Well, it's a reminder that history is often more complex and nuanced than we might initially think. And while the idea of sibling marriage might seem strange to us today, for ancient Egyptians, it was just one piece of their intricate cultural tapestry. What do you think about this surprising aspect of Egyptian history? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more fascinating insights into the mysteries of the past. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep questioning.